I don't think you learn anything by hiding history. And I'm glad to see the four panels that are going on display. I think it's very important to have conversations about why these panels were placed in the first place, why they were taken down after being placed for so many years, and what does that reveal about the way we have a we as a culture and as a society has changed. In some ways, I think that's gratifying, and unless we stop for a moment and think about it, as an exposition such as this will allow us to do, we don't get to consider how we've changed. We don't get to consider where we are as a culture, what we are thinking, what our intellectual development actually is. So I'm very excited to see that. One of the things I do find interesting is that the controversy came about the first four panels. And for me, the second four panels are equally as problematic. In those first four panels, as we are going from colonialism through slavery, we do see renderings of people of color, however difficult those renderings are, however controversial those rending, renderings are. Once we emerge into the modern period, that's gone completely. And most of those figures are primarily white figures. So there is a subtle statement, which I think is a problem in our society, that the default American identity is a white identity. And ordinary American life, rendered through prosaic images such as agriculture, really is a white way of life somehow. So I find the erasure of color as we get into the modern period very interesting and equally for me as controversial as some of the depictions in those earlier panels. Having said that, I think it's very important that there be a context around them. They have existed in the Department of Agriculture without a context for so long that I think people see them, understand them in perhaps less than desirable ways. And so I would like to see some of that um, rendered and corrected. One of the things I find most interesting about images that claim to be realistic are the ways in which they invite us to look at them and the ways in which they reveal the kind of knowledge we bring to these images. Two of the pictures that really caught my interest were images of a black man in overalls. And one image was during the period of slavery, one image was after the period of slavery. But I kept asking myself, how do we know? How do we know which of these black men is actually the slave and which is the newly freed black men? And the images themselves don't really give us much clue. What we bring to those pictures are our presumptions, our attitudes, our values that allow us to read the figure in certain ways, how he's positioned, how he's placed in relationship to the white characters who are in the image as well. So what I love about these pictures are their silences, the ways in which they raise so many questions and don't answer many and really involve us, I think, in gazing at them. But I think they're posing a problem because of information we already have and information that we are taught in so many other places in so many other ways. So they just become a restatement of things that we have seen maybe even very briefly unconsciously seen elsewhere. So in that sense, I was a little bit surprised at the controversy surrounding them. Um, I was also a little bit surprised that the area of agriculture became this grounds for raising these controversies. I expected that um, somewhere else. How many of these images exist in all of the buildings if we think about Georgia as a state? So, so for that reason, I find them very valuable, and I'm looking forward to seeing the context that's going to surround them once they are put on display. What is difficult for me as a woman looking at those pictures is the total lack of humanity, in a sense. There is nothing individual there. There is just representation. And it becomes such a repeated representation as to what a woman of color is. Is she sensual? Is she an object of work? Is she an object of toil? so that we never get to understand what are the individual emotions. And certainly from the colonial period to slavery, so many records tell us that women were key thinkers in articulating the many facets of those systems, colonialism and slavery, and their impact on human growth, human development, their impact on children, their impact on families. And none of that gets rendered in these idealized images of what a woman is. In many ways, I think those 
renditions of women reinforce, again, knowledge that we have, presumptions that we have been taught over time, and don't do anything to really break those presumptions down. And I think an artist can do that with just a stroke of a brush, you know, just a wrinkle by an eye, a complexity in a glance, a complexity in a stare, and I don't see any of that in these women. They are just there. They are um, not unlike the trees and the rocks and the lands that they are just kind of gently blended into.